His word, my hope secures. He will my shield and portion be as long as love endures. The world shall soon dissolve like snow. The sun forbear to shine, but God yes. will call Amen. me yes. here below, will be forever mine, cause my chains are they want to say or testify before we turn the preacher loose. Golly gee. Pastor, come and bring us the word that we might grow and be blessed. I pray that you are growing. And I know that we're blessed, aren't yes. we? Amen. We're the most blessed people there ever was. Why? Because we're a child of the King. Yes. So we are blessed. Praise <coughs> the Lord. I love that song. I love the old version and I love the new version. I mean, you can't just you can't get no better than that, can you? That's right. Love the Lord. Has everybody been exercising their faith? Amen. Yes. Amen. God. Let's make the devil mad. This is my Bible. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. And I can have what it says I can have. have what it says I can have. This day. This day. In this house. I will be taught. I will be taught. The infallible. Incorruptible. Indestructible. Life giving. And life saving. Word of God. Word of God. And I'll never be the same. And I'll never be the same. Never, 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 never. In Jesus' in name. In Jesus' name. Like I say, we're never the same, or we shouldn't be the same. The Word says that we become a new creature, that old things are passed away. So when we give our heart to the Lord, even though the sin that we, that we was in, we become a new creature, and all that's in the past. And who brings up the past? The devil. The devil. So... If you're a child of God and somebody brings up your past or something happens like that, believe me, it's just the devil doing it, okay? Because we are, just like that song, our chains are gone. Mm -hmm. We have been set free. No longer are we bound to the devil. Yeah, we can give in to him, but that's our own choice. That's right. we, we can lean our ears to what he tells us, but that's our own choice. That's right. But we are free. <laughs> I want to read you something that I found, and I, I like this. I mean, I thought, well, this is good, and I hope everybody pays attention to it. And it's caught, you know, we've all filled out our credit report before, haven't we? I mean, I know I have. Some of us passed, some of us failed. I don't know about yours, but listen to this. It says, if our life was a report, a credit report, and we were trying to obtain God's blessings based on our scores, would we get it? Let that sink in, okay? A lot of people say, why, yeah, because I, you know, I do everything for God. Do you really? Are you sold out? Our history
history shows that we've been delinquent in praise, way overdue in prayer and love, and our worship has been in collection. And we've missed a few payments, or we've only paid half. Are you seeing what this is saying? And not to mention that our debt to income ration is way too high. So, would our credit report earn us the blessings and promises of God that we were trying to obtain? What would your credit report say about you? Would you qualify for the blessings? Everybody's just looking. Wow, I didn't get that. That went over my head. Are you delinquent in prayer? Are you delinquent in praise? Have you lost out on the collection of what belongs to, to God? Have you done everything that that read? When I read that, I thought, hey, that's good. You know, because I put myself in there. Sometimes I'm delinquent on praise. Sometimes I get delinquent on prayer. And sometimes I get delinquent on love, too. Did anybody? I think you just preached a message. <laughs> well, that ain't it, but... <laughs> so we get two for one. <laughs> two, that's right. I like those two for one deals, don't you? Yes. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm so glad for each and every one that's here this morning. You know, that shows me that you love the Lord and that you're ready. I mean, ready and willing to do for God. And yeah, sometimes, sometimes that old bed looks really good and comfy and you'd just rather stay in it, wouldn't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know every one of us would, but praise the Lord, there's a better. I mean, there's a better. When we make an effort... That's when God makes his effort for us. When we're faithful for him, he's always, he just, he's just not faithful one time or, or maybe when he feels like it, but he's faithful all the time. We need to be faithful to him all the time, don't we? This I done a while back, back in the summertime. And as I was praying and studying yesterday, God said, Hey, I want it to be brought again. And, you know, I thought, well, Lord, I, you know, because I had studied all, all week and, and I had something else. And I thought, well, I'm going to do this. But God said, no, I want this to go forth. So, open your ears up. Be ready to listen. Take it into the heart. Okay? And what this is about, you know, you know, I told you a while back that I seen this sign in Kubel about a diamond. How it radiated and shined and glistened and, and you know, the name of that diamond. Well, it, you know, I'm not going to go in that because, you know, but God said that we're supposed to be diamonds for Him and radiate and shine and glisten in every angle that we're turned. Now, pay it. this is what he said yesterday. Every angle that a diamond is turned, if it's a pure, genuine diamond, it glistens. And I mean, when that sun shines on it, I mean, it just sparkles every which way, don't it? Mm -hmm. Every which way that it's turned at every angle. And God said, how are you? How do you glisten and how do you radiate at every angle that you're turned? And what he was meaning, every angle that you go through this world as, in, okay? Everything that the devil throws on you, every, you know, we could be turned in an in a, a angle of anger or jealousy or hurt or depression. Do you see what I'm saying? What angle will you glisten Will you glisten at it? If you're turned to that angle of jealousy, how are you going to radiate? How is your diamond going to shine? Are you the genuine? Now, if you're not the genuine diamond that you're supposed to be, you ain't going to shine and glisten very good, are you? 
I mean, it's going to be like a dull form. When you turn it, maybe one way it'll shine, but the other way it ain't going to shine. Okay, so the Lord said, that's how my children should be. I fashioned them as a diamond to radiate and sparkle at every angle they're turned. Why? Because they're fashioned after me. Oh, yes. Amen. How did Jesus, at every angle that he was turned down here, what come forth? What come forth from him? He shone as a pure diamond from God, didn't he? He showed us how we're supposed to act and what we're supposed to do in situations. But do we do that most of the time? What happens when we get aggravated at someone? Do we shine like that diamond? What happens when things don't go our way? Are we shining like that diamond? You know, Jesus didn't get his way all the time. You may say, well, he was the son of God. Yes, he did. No, he didn't. If you can go back and remember, have you ever read the story when he was in the garden? What did he pray? He didn't want to have to die. He didn't want to have to go through all that. He was human just like we are. Yes, he was God's son, but he had every feeling that we feel. When, his, when he cut, he bled. When he hurt, he hurt. I mean, just like us. He didn't want to have to go through that. So he went and prayed. He knowed what was laid up for him. But he didn't get his will, did he? The last prayer, Father, not my will, but your will be done. How many of us pray that? Not my will, Father, but your will be done. Not what I want to happen, Father, but what you want to happen in my life. What you want me to do. What the Word says. But a lot of us go on our own will, don't we? Right. We override God's will. We override the Holy Spirit that's on the inside of us. And we do our own will. Go our own way. Do our own thing. Speak our own thing. We get mad. We get angry. We get frustrated. <laughs> <laughs> we don't use wisdom a lot, do we? We're not letting that diamond shine like God wants us to shine on this earth, are we? You know, that light, we're supposed to be shining here. Mm -hmm. Why? Why are we supposed to be a shining light here? So we can hoard up everything, all the blessings and all the things that this world has and, and forget about those souls out there? No. We're on a mission here. What's our mission here? To do our own thing? No. But to do God's will. Our mission here is to win as many lost souls as we can. And we can't do that very well if our diamond's gone out and our diamond's not shining and it's been when it's turned at every angle that that angle ain't shining, can we? No way. We're supposed to radiate what? The most of all. What are we supposed to be radiating out there, church? Love. My little son-in-law. Radiate love. <coughs> That's what's supposed to be a shining bigger and greater in us than anything else. Why? Because when we radiate that love, then every, every other angle, that diamond's going to glow. And it's going to sparkle. I mean, I know women, we like those diamonds. We like them. Don't say that you don't. We like to have the pretty diamonds. I mean, just think of it. When we get to heaven... <coughs> Hey, some of the walls are going to be diamond. And just think of it, you might like gold. We're going to walk on streets of gold. I mean, every jewel and every fine gem and every, you know, uh, what, do you, what do you call the gold and the silver, the minerals? No. Anyway, hey, it's going to be plenteous. But is there going to be wars over it? No. 
No, it's going to be a lifestyle for us. Why? Because God renamed it beautiful. Beautiful. Turn to 1 Corinthians 13. And we're going to see how we sparkle at every angle. Okay? I want to be that diamond that God's proud of, don't you? Mm -hmm. Let's start with verse 4. We've read this I don't know how many times. We all should know it by heart. <laughs> I mean, honestly. We should know these <laughs> verses by heart. Charity, which means love. You know that, that was, this is one of my lessons that I love to do mm -hmm. on love. Why? Because that's what we're born into. That's what we are. If we've got God on the inside of us. That's what God is. That's what God consists of. That's what this church is born from. And if you have love, then faith automatically comes down it. You heard Brother Freddie preach that last week. So, instead of charity, we're going to say love. Love suffereth long and is kind. Love envieth not. Love vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up. <coughs> Excuse me. Doth not behave itself unseemingly. Seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked. Thinketh no evil. Rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Beareth all things and believeth all things, hopeth all things and endureth all things. A lot of us can't endure a little thing, can we? Love never fails, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fall. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect comes, then that which is in part shall be done away with. And what is that that's perfect? <clears throat> the Lord, the Spirit of God. Could it be love? When I was a child, I spoke as a child, and I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I become a man, I put away childish things. But you know what? A lot of us don't want to put away those childish things. We still live in that childish state. You may say, well, no, I, I don't. I'm gr Do you ever get frustrated? Do you ever lose your patience? Do you ever get mad when you don't get your way? Do you ever throw a little tantrum? Oh, now, Judy, grown people don't throw tantrums. Really? I've seen a lot, though. Tantrums. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know it part, but then shall I know as also I am known. How do you want to be known, church? How do you want to be known? You know, I was thinking about this when I read it yesterday. When you leave out, and we're all going to leave this world. I mean... Life don't go on forever. It don't go on forever down here. But when you leave, what testimony are you going to leave? What's people going to think of you? How are they going to remember you? Are they going to remember you as that shining light? What have they seen come forth from you? You know, that's a big thing to think about. I was thinking about that, and, and yesterday I thought, Lord, if anything, when I leave, I want people to remember me by how much I love them and how much I love you. Do you see what I'm saying? But people look at our life. They look at it not just in church. Yeah, they look at you in church, but they look at you if they go to your home. Your children look at you, parents. And parents, you're supposed to be a shining example. And you look at your children. And the world looks at us, how we proclaim and how we act out in the public. Are you letting that diamond shine forth? Or do you get mad or do you get frustrated or do you lose patience? Think about it, church. How are, you, how are you representing 
God, how are you letting that diamond that we're supposed to be shine at every angle that you're turned? If things don't go your way, how is it shining forth? When you don't get your way, how is it shining forth? When you get upset at somebody, how is it shining forth? When things don't get done, how is it shining forth? When we get sick in body, how is it shining forth? When we bills is overdue, how is it shining forth? I hope you're seeing what I'm saying. <laughs> You know, every one of us gets agitated, don't we? <laughs> I mean, every one of us. I mean, we go with this big old feeling thing on our shoulder waiting for somebody to... And then we lose control. Lose control. But you see, if you've got God in control, losing control ain't going to be that very easy for you. Is it? I don't get a lot of grins or amens or nothing. Amen. Hey, I put it, if you just don't accept it, I put it all on me. <laughs> I put it right back to me. And now abide with faith, hope, and charity or love. And these three, but the greatest of these is what? Love. 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 So love is like a diamond. It's cut in many Precise cuts, angles, like I said, so that it will shimmer and sparkle at every turn. Love is one thing, but displayed in many different ways. You can say I love and, and that you walk and, and talk and love all you want, but if you don't display it, I say no, you don't. And you know what? Uh, when you're a child, of you know... When someone really loves you, you know when that action of love is true, don't you? We, you, we know when it's just a pretense love, don't we? How? By the action and by the Holy Spirit. Love is what holds everything together. You know, back when I was younger, before I ever got married, there was a song that that was out. Uh, what the world needs now is love, sweet love. That's the only thing that there's just too little love. And you know, back then I thought, well, that was just a good song, but you know, it makes sense. What the world needs now is love, sweet love. Because it's the only thing that there's just too little of. You know, we can look around. We can watch the news. We can look at, around if we just go to the store out there and, and we see that there's not enough love or there's not, I mean, that love's not going forth. I mean, even in some of the best Christians that you know, sometimes... That love's not going forth. Because it says that love beareth all things. And a lot of the Christians don't bear a lot of things, do they? Why? Because they get aggravated. They get agitated. They, they have a tendency to want to give up because they don't get their own way. You can't understand love with your own mind. I've tried. <laughs> I've tried. You can't. You can't understand how God could love someone like He loved us and how He loves the what we would consider, you know, well, look at them over there. Why would God love somebody like that? We don't understand it. We can't comprehend it. Why? Because we haven't grown and matured in that God kind of love, that agape love yet. Makes me go back like that story I, I read a long time ago, read in a book. You know, this little woman that, that this other boy had shot her only son. Now you parents, I mean, how, how you love your children, you couldn't give them up. And if something happened to them, I mean, it would devastate you, wouldn't it? 
Oh, this woman had one child is all that she had. And he got shot by another boy. And she, for a time, she hated that boy. She hated him. She was a Christian. She wanted only the worst to happen to him. To put, be put away for his life. He didn't deserve to be out in the public for what he done. But then you know what? God touched her heart. Touched that woman's heart. Yes. And love come on the scene. Uh -huh. So what did she do, this mother? She went on the war for fighting for him to get him out. She'd go visit him in the prison. Tell him about Jesus. Won him to the Lord. Got his appeal. Went back to the court. She changed her testimony. He was released. And what happened? She brought him back into her home right. as, his, as her child. <laughs> and when I read that, I thought, my goodness, that woman learned the love of God. That's how he loves us. Somebody that, I mean, so undeserving. I was so undeserving. But God reached down and pulled me up to his heart and just loved me. He loves us so much. And he wants us to have that love on the inside of us. Yeah, every day we, go, we get done dirty. But it ain't by God. It's by the devil. Yeah, every day people's going to come against us. Every day we're going to have a heartache and troubles and trials. But it ain't God. It's the devil. God said, I give you a way out. <laughs> I've made a way of escape for you if you accept it. <coughs> That way of escape is a high way of love that's going to get you out of that mess that you're in. It's going to let you overcome a whole lot of obstacles. It's going to let you love the unlovable. Yes. You know, we can love those that love us, can't we? I mean, that's easy, ain't it, Karen? We can love those, I mean, like that, but those that has done things to us and, and hurt us and come against us. I mean, that takes an effort, don't it? It does. A big effort. But you turned around. It took God loving us. You know, we may look at people and say, well, they've done so, I mean, but in God's eyes, there's no little or big sin. We may think well, that person's done, I mean, he can't ever be forgiven. He's done bad, bad things. Leaving here and going out in your car and talking about one of your neighbors or one of your brothers and sisters is just as bad. A tattler or a gossiper <clears throat> burning someone's name is just as bad as going out there and committing murder with a gun. Why? Because you're committing murder with that tongue. There's no difference. We make a difference in our own eyes. But in God's eyes, no. God wants you to shine, church. He wants you to shine forth as that diamond. For man's love fails and gives up. It does, don't it? But God's love don't. And aren't you glad that God's love didn't ever give up on you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, we love when our children do something and we get so proud of them, don't we? How do you think God is proud of you? Have you, I mean, have you been that perfect child? None of us have, have we? Man's love comes to an end. But God's love is eternal. That's right. 
You know, that's what, Amen. you know, I get to thinking when I think about the love and how, you know, people can just end love. Yeah. I mean, they hear you hear them speak, I love, I love, I love, I love, and then something comes up and they just put an end to it. Right. I mean, forget it. Well, that love wasn't very strong, was it? Was it real? <laughs> it wasn't real. How can you put it, an end to love? You can't. If you've got the true thing, right, right. there's no way. Man's love is conditional. We put conditions on on our love, don't we? Right. If you'll do this for me, well, I just I'll love you to the end of the world. Oh my, women! If if we tell our oh honey, if you buy this for me, I'll love you more and more and more. <laughs> our husbands the same thing and. We put conditions on it. <clears throat> Aren't you glad that God don't put conditions on His love? His love is unconditional. Yes, amen. I find I can't do enough to earn God's love. I want to keep on doing and doing. You know, you've heard it preached so many times. Here we shovel with a little shovel and give out what we think we do. So grand, something for God. Oh boy, look at me, I've done this. I want <laughs> I want my name and the big old headlights. Or those lights, those signs, whatever you call it. I want the glory. Don't work that way. <clears throat> Don't work that way. Love is unconditional. And if we put conditions on our love, then we're not walking as that diamond that God wants us to. We're not walking in the love that God wants us to. Love comes from the heart. A lot, a lot of us wants to love from this mind right here, our thinking. It don't go plumb down to the heart. It don't reach that far, Carol, because we stop it. Right. <laughs> We put a stop right there, a block right there, that it can't go to the heart because we know if it goes to the heart, then we're going to have to change a little bit more. So we put that block right there. And we put our condition on our love and how we're going to handle it and how we're going to act on it and how it's going to come forth from us. Mm -hmm. We make it obey us. That's right. It's still letting love take hold of us, for we obey it. No wonder the Lord said in Proverbs 4 and 23, keep your heart. Or in other words, guard it. Put up a guard around it. Keep your heart with all diligence, with everything that you possibly can. Guard it. For out of it spring the issues of life. Yes. The issues of life. And those issues of life, church, are your love walk. Amen. Is your love walk. Yes. Turn to Ezekiel 28. You may say, well, what in the world are you going to 